And we all shuffle a little bit this way. Shuffle? Was that's that, it. Was that's that it. Sort of a term that you chose? It's the split. It's a whole new thing now. Love the camera. Yeah, love the camera. Love, the camera. Guys. love me. Love me. Yeah, that's looking pretty good so far. You look like a classy and very handsome looking bunch of dudes. Yeah. <laughs> Shriveling. Cool, cool. All right, so let's try a bit of a uh, look away here where we just don't look into the camera, all right? We look anywhere but. Once more. Beautiful. Very good. So you've got a little bit of that kind of reservoir dog feel out there, really. Excellent, 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 excellent work, excellent work. Very good. So you're loosening up now, man. Starting to loosen up. Very good, very good. Very good. Is this just straight down the guts? Yeah, just straight down the guts. <laughs> you can do that, no worries. Now, maybe just a little bit of, uh, yeah, there you go, look away. No hiding behind anyone else. Alright, okay, straight in here. Sweet. Yeah, that's it, that's a good shape, just like that. That's perfect. Looking straight in here, looking straight in here. Beautiful. Alright, now let's just go to the uh, look around. Anywhere near the lens here. Beautiful. At each other. Now let me see your uh, best rock star look. There you go. Perfect. Alright, I'm going to shoot a little wider now. So we've got the full length. Straight in here. Okay, so, alright, let's go for the look around. Let's go for the look around now. Sweet. And we can even go the little the kind of wide eyed look, you know what I mean? Excellent. 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 <laughs> I'm losing it the back there. That's it. There you go. That's it. That's it. Perfect. Perfect. That's it. That's it. Tilt your head a little bit that way for me. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Constant perfection. Very good. Very good. Straight in here, gents. Consular professionals. You can consular professionals. I think the thing about this room is that if you can remember it, then you weren't there. Um, we would, of course, remember the roofing cabaret days. No, you might have a few memories that I don't. I remember we opened a show here with a, to the sound of galloping cavalry. We were on stage, curtains pulled back, we were all shot with arrows, and I think a few people bummed out on that. <laughs> but it was a great event for Richard Cabaret, it was a way for us to sort of ease our way into Melbourne and feel very welcome. We have a lot of good music in the Did it take people a while to get split ends? Did they realise that you were just boys having fun and you weren't really that crazy? Well, I got it straight away because I was at school and I wrote split ends in my pencil case and went to these guys. And it seemed quite remarkable because it was incredibly different to the other bands that were around at the time. We all had flares and we were playing status quo covers. And suddenly this thing came out that was like um, every kind of imagining you'd ever had as a, as a child in a faraway place. So, um, yeah. Um, and now, what was the exact question? I'm taking it back to my childhood. I'm trash. I'm trying to say always easy to go. Did it take the general populace a while to just get what you're all about? And if you weren't really crazy in a while, but just that it was an act? Definitely. I went to the Monero Wahoo Music Festival in New Zealand and saw these guys when I was just kind of the audience. And, it was their third gig ever, and it was just before Black Sabbath came on stage, and people were filming around me, and I was just in a sense, and, and uh, crying, and people were walking the wrong way to try and get to see sense, but, yeah, <laughs> I think well, we came to Australia in 75, and um, we developed a really strong cult following, but we didn't really make ourselves known to the, to the, you know, the general population until about 1980, so... You know, we were pretty much booed off stage, actually, the first time. The first week we played it here was um, Skyhawks at Festival Hall, I think. Yeah. And uh, we were booed off stage, yeah. We, we Isn't this the end Skyhawks and us? Yeah. It was a big How far into the night was that? We were on first. It was a, it was a lunchtime show, actually. We were just driven down from uh, Sydney, so we were kind of exhausted. We just dragged over and dragged ourselves along to Festival Hall. And national on stage, there were a lot of uh, Skyhawks fans, a lot of ACDC fans, no Sutherland fans at all. And uh, a lot of Sharpies in the audience who really hated us big time, maybe it's a fancy one of them. And she told us years later that she secretly loved us. 
Uh, yeah, it took a while. We dug in there. We always thought we were the best band in the world. I think we had an unshakable faith, so it, none of it really mattered how hard it was. In fact, I think for an audience, it's good to go on a journey with a band. If they happen all of a sudden, straight away, you kind of don't trust it as much. But if you're part of it, the process, and then five years later, they kick in and you feel you're part of it. And our fans kind of did that, I think. Uh, did you have reservations joining it? Did they put you through an, an, an initiation ceremony that... Uh... Yes, so both, of those. <laughs> yes both of those. So the reservations I had lasted for about 20 minutes. So just formed a band with another guy in Auckland, and I had to sort of mentally give that away. But uh, I got rung up by my mum, and uh, Tim rang mum first, because I was only 18. Yeah, definitely right. And, uh, you know, I had to rush around to get my passport, and I was three days, um, I'd been in the hospital lordly prior to that, so, you know, it's still a good decision to leave that for you. But, uh, <laughs> Having done it, got to England, the very first person I met was Nigel, it was his first day on the job as well. And uh, when these guys were, they had gone out for lunch and they came back and the very first thing they did was get me to go down to the shop and buy some potato chips. So that was a ritual, I guess, yeah. I was the youngest, had to go and do all the stuff like that. What's the main motivation? Well, you said clothes. Yeah, I mean, fairly obvious, I think, fairly obvious, you don't need to do it. It's just, we want to do it. Um, there's a lot of passion for it. So it's, it's only that. It was always like that with Spoon, because we never made a sensible decision ever about what might make us money or what might do well for us. In fact, we really made a lot of decisions that made it very hard for us to make any money ever. And uh, it took us from, from the formation of the band eight years to really pay our, pay our way properly. So somehow, somehow it didn't seem to matter to us. We just kept going. We loved it. Our rehearsals were our best moments and the most glorious moments almost. So we're a band that plays for each other, with each other, of each other, and it really is like that. Richard Wilkins here, John. It's lovely to see you. Richard, I just wanted to request Eddie if you could play the glissando for my... I hope I know. It's a good request. What's a glissando? Oh, the big rum. The last one's one, but... What the things did you play that one? Um, it's going to be in the deal, I think. <laughs>